So here's the thing. I made six videos about the Suhoi 57. I covered the aircraft in a great detail because a lot of the Western public is not familiar with the Russian technology. I explained times and again how the Russians do things differently. And this is what I get. So let's address some of these comments and let's address the last big subject that has remained unexplored. Stealth. So stay till the end. The Suhoi 50 has five antennas, two of which are L-band arrays. L-band, which is a longer wavelength band than the X-band, is a radar frequency, is a radar band where the stealth is way less effective. Some say that the Suhoi 57 arrays are too small to be really effective, and maybe is true, but actually knowing that a stealth aircraft is there, even though you cannot locate it precisely, is already a big technical advantage. Uh, there's also the possibility that at the tip of the wing of the Suhoi 57, there are going to be more antennas that are not being disclosed publicly. Uh, so maybe the L-band arrays are not that small. So if there is a fighter that has little probability of being surprised by an F-22 or an F-35, that fighter is the Suhoi 57. No other fighter in the world has the same onboard capability of detecting stealth. It is surprising how many people actually take this as a fact and not for what it is. It is actually the United States Air Force doctrine. So this is the way the Air Force is going to fight the next war. And it may well work, but we are not guaranteed. Until there is a confrontation with a near peer opponent, we don't know if this doctrine is actually working or not. And please don't tell me that in the last 30 years there, all the engagements have been beyond visual range. Basically, the United States and the Western Alliance never fought a competent opponent during these years, and they were always, always with a large advantage in technology and numbers. As I said in a different video, the first victim of a high-tech warfare is high-tech warfare itself. Yes, it's true, exposed rivets and large seams have been seen, but this is a superficial analysis. Wait till the end when we speak about stealth. Yes, it is underpowered if you compare with the original plans, but it's still very capable with the AL-41. And by the way, apologies for getting the MTBF of the AL-41 wrong in the first video of the series. It is about 4,000 hours. And then the Isdelia 30 is pretty much right behind the corner. It has flown already, it is being tested, and shouldn't be that far away. So it is not underpowered as in an aircraft that has insufficient performance. Performance, it is underpowered because uh, the development took too long. Yes, of course, this is true, but you have to consider that the F-22 was developed when Russia was during the impasse of the 90s. It was a terrible time for them, where development pretty much arrested. They had famine. They had deaths. That was a terrible time for Russia. And when finally full-scale development actually resumed, they accumulated some delays. And to be honest, there were also other priorities, some asymmetric priorities to the President's on the Suhoi 57. For the Russian airspace, the Suhoi 57 is a quantum leap that they're trying to do. And these projects take 20, 25 years, give or take.
Yes, there are a few because, as we said, they started later. The last time a reporter has been in the Suhoi uh, factory and has visited the assembly line, they have counted about a dozen units at different level uh, of completion. So the production is actually going. It's not in large numbers. It's not like the F-35 today, but it is coming along. And by the way, I don't think that they do a press release every time they deliver one. So we don't know exactly how many are in service down. Sorry guys, you totally missed the point. The key word in all of this is asymmetry. I know that some think that being better means being superior in a few numeric parameters. Some of them are really meaningless, like, for example, the missile range. Some people think that the missile range or the radar range are a thing. So a missile that has a range of uh, 50 kilometers is better than a missile that has a range of 45 kilometers. That's, come on, that's not the point, guys. It's not black or white. Well, sorry, but this is an oversimplified version. I know it is reassuring if you see the world in a logic of us against them, but definitely that's not the case. The Russians do not plan to respond with the same means, tactics and doctrines of the Americans in case of confrontation. Doing the same thing as your opponent when you are in a condition of material inferiority is simply suicidal. Nobody competent would do that. And this was stated times and again in all the Russian doctrinal publications. We want good relations with all participants of the international dialogue, and really we don't want to burn bridges. But if someone mistakes our good intentions for indifference or weakness and intends to burn or even blow up these bridges themselves, they should know that Russia's response will be asymmetrical, swift and harsh. Asymmetrical, asymmetrical, asymmetrical. What they plan to do is something different to cripple the capabilities of whatever enemy they are up against. It seems that many believe that if they don't do the same stuff that we do in the West, is because there are stupid simpletons. Well, I don't know what you think, but I always thought that underestimating your opponent is the first step to defeat. An aircraft like the Suhoi 57 will be employed differently from its Western counterparts. That's the reason why it is different. On to stealth. So when you speak about stealth, there is a number that is thrown around freely, that is the radar cross-section. The radar cross-section is defined like this. The RCS of a radar target is the hypothetical area required to intercept the transmitted power density at the target that if the total intercepted power were re-radiated isotropically, the power density actually observed at the receiver is produced. In practice, the larger the cross-section, the more visible is an aircraft on radars. However, an aircraft doesn't have one radar cross-section value. The radar cross-section varies with a lot of parameters and the most important being the attitude of the aircraft, so the angle under which you're viewing the aircraft actually determines the radar cross-section of the aircraft more than everything. And also the radar cross-section depends from the radar. As we said before, in the X-band, which is the band used by fighter jets radars, stealth is extremely effective. In the L-band, at a longer wavelength and a lower frequency, it is not as effective. The RC, the radar cross-section, is higher. Radar cross-sections values are available in the press for every aircraft, but they are all estimates. I've never seen any official statement about the radar cross-section of an aircraft. Never. They are all estimates. I personally find this discussion about who has the biggest radar cross-section quite curiously similar to another discussion about size and pretty much it has the same finality. 
Coming to the Suhoi 57, the aircraft has clearly been designed to be low observable. All the classic features of geometric stealth are present. There are no right angles, the platform is aligned, the vertical surfaces are canted outwards, and all the panels are serrated. It is not 100% clear what is the solution for the engines, but fans and turbine blockers seem to be present. And the canopy is coated with metal oxide to keep the impinging radiation out of the cockpit. When the first close-ups of the aircraft became available, it was clear that there were a lot of exposed rivets and very large gaps. And the obvious explanation is that those Russian simpletons do not have the sophisticated technology uh, required for the small tolerances that we see on the American aircraft. The misunderstanding derives from the fact that the Suhoi 57 prototypes are all different. Many of them have just been built for uh, testing the flight systems, testing the aerodynamics, testing the engines, but not the combat systems. Many of them do not have any form of coating or uh, rather absorbing materials. And no prototype was ever brought to the production standard. The production aircraft looks much smoother and many of the exposed rivets and many of the gaps have been covered. There are way fewer metallic parts exposed. About 70% of the external surface of the aircraft is actually composites and those composites have been designed to be radar absorbing and in fact they have been made with a relatively unusual variety of electrically conductive carbon fiber. The tolerances are reduced albeit they are not as tight as we see on for example the F-35. Making those small tolerances is not anything particularly difficult but I believe that in this case we are in the presence of the usual Russian compromise to make the aircraft more resilient to damage and wear and tears. And mind that the gaps between the panels now are filled with conductive material and the most of the exposed rivets are gone. We also know that the Russians use a radar absorbing paint and the aircraft is painted and all the metallic parts are painted. Some analysts have reason to believe that the Russian radar absorbing materials are still not as effective as the American ones, but there is no doubt that the aircraft is reasonably low observable in its final configuration. It is pretty much impossible to say how stealth an aircraft is just by studying it from the outside, but definitely the proposition that the aircraft is not stealth doesn't seem to be justified. And to be honest, a lot of the statements that you read on the internet about the Suhoi 57 are not justified. And if you want to learn why, well, just watch the videos that are going to appear beside me. So thank you very much for watching and see you there.